Following the success of manufacturers like Huawei and Lenovo, Jioni is the latest Chinese manufacturer to enter the overcrowded Indian mobile market. The eLife E5 is Jioni's mid-range entrant, positioned to compete directly against market leader Micromax's own Canvas 4. So how does the eLife E5 fare? That's what we try to find out in this full review. Hey guys, Ash here from CurseForever.com and you're watching my full review of the Jioni eLife E5. So let's start with the built-in design. So here we have a 4.8 inch AMOLED display. That's a 720p display with a pixel density of 306 pixels per inch. On top we've got the sensors, the earpiece and a 5 megapixel front facing camera. You've got, uh, you've got three familiar capacitive buttons at the bottom, the menu, home and back. To the left you've got the volume rockers and the power button. This might take a little bit of getting used to uh, given the power button to wake the device is on the left side. On the right you've got your micro sim card slot and your micro USB port. To the top you've got the 3.5mm headphone jack. At the bottom there's nothing. The back you have the Gioni branding, uh, a speaker, a secondary noise cancelling microphone, the 8 megapixel rear facing camera and a single LED flash. Overall, the phone feels really slim. It's just 6.85 millimeters thick. It's also very light at just 134 grams. Though there are multiple sites reporting that the eLife E5 has Curla glass on top or even Dragon Trail glass on top, it hasn't been confirmed and you cannot find that on Gioni's own webpage. Uh, however, they do include a couple of screen protectors and also a case. We have reached out to Gioni about this and when we get official confirmation, we'll annotate it onto the video as well as update the description. Overall, the eLife E5 feels well built and I like the fact that Gioni's decided to go with their original design instead of trying to make a phone that looks like an iPhone or a Galaxy. Let's talk a little bit about what's under the hood. The eLife E5 is powered by the MediaTek 6589 turbo chip set. This contains 4 Cortex-A7 cores clocked at 1.5GHz each, coupled with a PowerVR Series 5 XT GPU and 1GB of RAM. The internal storage is 16GB and on the downside, it cannot be expanded with microSD cards. Overall, the performance is pretty decent and the eLife E5 felt pretty smooth and stable to use. Gaming performance is pretty decent. Most intensive games were playable with very little lag. If you need more information on the gaming performance, we've got a separate video on our gaming test. I'll leave a link to that in the description as well as annotated to the end of the video. So feel free to check that out. All of this is powered by a 2000mAh non-user removable battery. Under our looping video playback test, the eLife E5 performed quite admirably, playing looping video for close to 8 hours before finally running out of juice. With moderate usage, getting through a full day on a single chat shouldn't be an issue. Let's talk a little bit about the display. The eLife E5 houses a 4.8 inch 720p AMOLED display giving it a pixel density of 306 pixels per inch. An AMOLED display means the blacks are really deep, but on the other hand the colors do tend to look a little oversaturated at times. The viewing angles are really great and with AMOLED displays not being the brightest, visibility under direct sunlight is average. Let's talk a little bit about the software. The eLife E5 runs Android 4.2.1 Jelly Bean with Gioni's own custom UI on top. With Gioni's custom UI, you do lose a bit of Android 4.2 functionality like the widgets on lock screen or the daydream mode. You do get a few cool effects like the, like the weather effect that you see right now. The regular Android 4.2 functionality like the double finger pull down to access quick toggles is still available. You get a few extra options like a scheduled airplane mode, scheduled power on and off, uh, some power saving options and audio profiles. You also get a memory manager. Apart from this, this is a two-level UI which means you do get an app draw. Uh, it is pretty customizable given the fact that, that you can choose between multiple skins that change the look and feel of the UI. Videos need to be launched from the gallery. The video player is pretty bare bones. It does get the job done though. It managed to play back most of the popular codecs pretty well. As far as audio quality via the internal speaker goes, here check it out for yourself. We found the audio fairly loud and clear. The music player gives you the regular host of options. The ability to sort your songs via the hits, 
artists, albums, folders, or, or run through all songs. You also get the DTS option. We were really impressed with the quality of audio via the included earphones. It was surprisingly good. Turning on the DTS option did enhance the listening experience. Overall, the software experience on the eLife E5 was pretty good. Apps open up quick and everything runs as smooth as it should. Let's move on to the camera now. This is the camera interface that you get with the eLife E5. You can swap between cameras this way. You can zoom in and out. You can also pinch to do that. This brings up a set of options. That's your capture modes, normal, panorama, face beauty, best shot, blah, blah, blah. You get your capture action, touch shot, touch shot, gesture shot, smile shot, and so on. Turning your flash on and off, color effects. This is more uh, filters, kind of frames, I guess. Yeah, frames. Uh, that's you get scene modes, white balance options, continuous shots, self timer. Uh, you can choose different picture sizes, so that's pretty much it. So, going back to normal, so let me take a few sample pictures over here. So, as far as videos go, again, you get the familiar options here zooming in and out few uh, options turning on or off flash color effects and your settings menu with electronic image stabilization uh, let's take a look at a few sample uh, pictures and videos that i shot the life e5 does take great images under brightly lit settings the images are crisp and the color reproduction is pretty natural under low lit settings the performance is average while the life e5 can shoot 1080p videos as you can see, the video is not really smooth and comes out a little jerky. So guys, in conclusion, we really like the Life E5. Uh, the AMOLED display is a pleasure to look at. The software is pretty smooth and stable. The camera captures great pictures. The battery life was surprisingly good. Audio playback via the included earphones was mind-blowing. On the other hand, video capture and gaming performance could have been better. And the lack of microSD support is definitely a big negative. But personally, I really like this phone, guys. If I was in the market today looking at a phone in this price range, I'd definitely choose the eLife E5 over anything else in the market today. So, what do you guys think about the eLife E5? Do you think it's a phone worth considering? Or do you think there are other devices that are better? If yes, let me know what you think is the better device. So, I'd like to hear your feedback. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. So, if you guys do want to pick this phone up, you can do that from Amazon.in. I will leave a direct link right below the like button in the description. So that pretty much wraps up this review guys, hope you liked it, if you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. In the meantime, if you guys do have any video requests for me or if you just want to stay updated on my latest videos and updates, feel free to hit me up on Facebook or Twitter or Google+, I'll leave my contact details right below the like button in the description. So once again, that's pretty much it guys, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you soon with more videos. Till then, this is Ash here from CursedForever.com, signing off, you guys have a great day, bye bye now.